Okay, uh, Tom, uh, good afternoon and many thanks for being with us again. Uh, many thanks for your time and to begin with this uh, conversation, uh, we want to ask you f uh, first and foremost, please tell us who Tom Atley is and how is it that you have been working and interested in the topic of uh, direct democracy and enhancing uh, uh, democracy procedures? Well, I've been an activist uh, all my life, grew up in an activist family, and I'm, I have been learned over time that working on issues uh, doesn't get you very far, that when you try and work on any particular issue, you probably won't get it handled in the way you want, but you may get it handled a little better, but then there's a whole pile of other issues, and whatever handling there was could change in the future, so it, uh, it became clear to me that changing the democratic system itself so that it was more able to have, uh, to more intelligently handle the issues that we face would be, uh, uh, be advantageous. It's sort of like computer people talk about garbage in, garbage out. Our system is made to generate uh, garbage from whatever you put into it. Uh, so having a democratic system that uh, not only produces better results, but engages more people, more voices in getting those results uh, has been my work. And the, the issue that I work on more than anything is making a wise democracy. And there's experiences I had in my life that sort of led me to my approach to this. I don't know to what extent you want to go into that, but this, this tells you the overall, uh, the overall perspective I have and why I got there. Can you please, Tom, tell us a, a bit more about what the Cointelligence Institute is? What are the current activities of the Cointelligence Institute? Uh, the Cointelligence Institute is interested in anything that can help us access the wisdom of a whole community or the wisdom of a whole society uh, on behalf of that community or that society. And that's one of the things that brings us to looking at democracy, participatory democracy and certain innovations that can be used to, uh, to bring together um, bodies of people who actually embody the whole. They don't just represent we also look at different forms of economics uh, that can uh, generate better outcomes than our current system of economics does. Again, accessing the wisdom and resources of the whole on behalf of the whole, uh, rather than having special interests, uh, elite, elite levels of society soaking up all the uh, wealth of a community, uh, the wealth of an ecosystem, whatever, getting absorbed and transformed transferred into concentrated wealth at the top of the society. That's something we also pay attention to alternatives regarding. Uh, and it's a small uh, research and promotional uh, We don't have a large, you know, a large institute. An effort in uh, Los Angeles to create conversations around homeless veterans. Uh, and we're uh, consulting with them because they're planning on doing a very uh, uh, some some very innovative things with that that we like the idea of like having a small group of people uh, selected at random to represent the diversity of Los Angeles uh, and giving them special access to experts and balanced information and to each other so they can talk together about uh, what would be the best solutions to this uh, crisis and large large numbers of homeless uh, veterans in Los Angeles and also having widespread discussions uh, all over the city, uh, which will be used both to inform that small group of citizens and to take whatever that group of citizens come up with and discuss that, what they like about it, what they don't like about it, and build community support and pressure on the official representatives to uh, handle the issue in a more sane manner. So that in involve the media. There's a lot of different things we can do to help access the potential wisdom of Los Angeles on behalf of all the people who are concerned about this issue in Los Angeles. And that kind of experimentation we engage with on the ground. We don't, there's lots of different uh, democratic and public engagement efforts that don't go as far as this does in its innovativeness, but we will pick certain innovative inno initiatives to consult with and help them design and carry out their projects. So that's an example of a current, a current project that we're working on. And they're going to be videoing the whole process 
uh, and interviewing the people who participate, uh, both to promote the idea of doing this kind of thing and to create a, uh, a knowledge base that allows other communities to replicate what they did in Los Angeles. So it has many dimensions. In a conversation that we held before, you mentioned also some findings and some uh, current uh, procedures that are taking place in order to enhance the way in which uh, representative of or the way in which democracy is being pra practiced, especially in Austria, uh, maybe Canada and Australia. Can you please tell us a, a bit more about these uh, sort of uh, experimentations about what democracy means and how is it that maybe there are some new ways to try to explore within these concepts that have not been explored yet? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I'm going to actually start with one that we did talk about but you didn't mention, which I just realized is a perfect overlap between my work and your interest in uh, direct democracy. Uh, in many places, including in the state of Oregon where I live, uh, direct democracy is manifested through the initiative process uh, where people, uh, organizations, groups can write a proposed law and by getting signatures uh, on, you know, to get it put on the ballot so that the population, the electorate is able to vote on it, uh, to vote on their law. And what has happened, we're one of the, uh, you know, half of the states in the United States have a state level initiative process and it has been largely taken over by special interests so more often than not, those, uh, those initiatives, those proposals do not represent the common good. Uh, and many people just vote against any initiative because they sort of recognize that. Uh, but some, often some initiatives are well promoted in the news media by special interests that have a lot of money to do that. And people who end up voting for something that is not actually in their interest to vote for. There's lots of media manipulation and public relations to skew the vote to make people vote for things that aren't good for them. So there is a, a, a new institution in Oregon which is called the Citizen Initiative Review where a randomly selected group of two dozen Oregonian voters uh, are selected and meet together for five days and study the a particular initiative and uh, talk to experts about whatever the uh, issue is that the initiative covers and interview people who are for the initiative, you know, people who are working to promote the initiative, people who are working to defeat the initiative, and then coming to conclusions, they create the, uh, this little council, this Citizen Initiative Review Council uh, of ordinary citizens who've made themselves into lay experts about this issue. They write a summary of what's going on with this issue and why one would vote for it or against it, what are the facts of the matter, and how they felt about it, how many of them supported it and were against it. And that report, which is a digestion of all the information about this issue, is printed in a voter information pamphlet that goes to all the voters. And there has been research that has shown the voters really value this and use it. So it is a, another force that is counter to the public relations uh, and media coverage that is bought by the special interests that put these initiatives together, which brings a level of sanity and wisdom to the initiative process again. But that is a particular way that like direct democracy, direct democracy can be uh, just crowd, sort of crowd consciousness where people vote on things where they have been manipulated by the media to believe certain things and then everybody will vote that way, uh, which is not necessarily healthy if there isn't some way to actually have public, good public reflection about whether this is a good idea or not, this proposal. Uh, so this is one way to integrate a very democratic, ordinary people uh, examining this on our behalf as voters. So we get good information from them and are more able to vote in ways that match our beliefs. Uh, our values and what's good for us. Uh, this particular model, which is one of the things we focus on, has many uses. This idea of picking a few dozen people and in some cases more than a hundred people 